It's Andre from High Performance Academy here. Let's check out what's been going on around HPA over the last week. All right, uh, a bit of an update on our Toyota SR86. And for those who are fresh to HPA and have never heard of this, this is uh, our endurance car that has been having a bit of a birthday in the off season. We'll jump across to my laptop screen and have a look at the car. And again, if you have been following us for a while and you are uh, aware of this car, it might look a little bit different. Yes, it did have a tan coloured wrap on it. It got a bit of a birthday over the off season, including a complete panel and paint and is back in black kind of like it at the moment looks pretty stealth uh, although it probably will end up with a bit more in the way of graphics on it before we end up uh, heading to the track for uh, actual endurance racing so uh, a few big changes that have gone on with this car one was the installation of the Bosch Motorsport ABS uh, I have got that up and running obviously because the car's been on track and we've shaken it down a couple of times uh, at the moment we're running on some pretty old hard slicks and it's the middle of winter here probably temperatures are around about three to five degrees the last few times I've been to the track so it's not optimal conditions to do a back-to-back -back between what the old ABS was like and, and what this is certainly in terms of outright performance but uh, it has been a big step forward particularly as well the change to a motorsport style pedal box with dual master cylinders a nice feature with the Bosch ABS as well I think most people kind of expect that once you've got ABS you don't really need to worry so much about your brake bias so how much of your braking effort is going towards the front axle and how much is directed towards the rear and yes to a degree that is true with uh, motorsport ABS or any ABS if the rears start locking before the fronts do then obviously the ABS is going to come in and unlock those rear wheels but we still want a natural level of balance because the ABS is not predictive it's reactive meaning that the rears have to start locking in that example I just gave before the ABS can come in and unlock them and if you're partially turning or trail braking into a corner and you get into that situation even even with ABS it can end up resulting in a loss of control. So the Bosch ABS essentially is always monitoring what's happening in terms of which wheels are locking and which, which are not and it will actually give you advice as a can message in terms of what your actual brake bias should be and what it is so you can kind of dial that in on the fly obviously that's a constantly changing parameter depending on the track conditions dry versus wet etc but it's nice to help you really get that fine tuned and into the ballpark uh, another big change that we have made is uh, the steering wheel for the car we'll get that under our overhead uh, so this is a we'll get that light out of the way uh, this is the ECU master cam based uh, switch pad or steering wheel panel I think they actually call it and we previously had another EC Master product in here which was their CAN switch pad which is a really small little switch pad that you can wire up multiple uh, switches to as well as rotary knobs and then all of that is transmitted via CAN. Worked well, required us to make up an actual panel uh, to mount everything to and there's a bit of work that goes into that. Uh, this is a nice sort of one size fits all solution with a range of knobs and buttons as you can obviously see one of the advantages with this is wireless now I say an advantage I've actually been a little bit gun shy and going in this direction previously because I know that despite uh, EC Master claiming that the battery life is good for I think it's one and a half million button presses I just know that I'd get to that 1.5 million and one button press on the second to last lap of an endurance race when I'm doing quite well and I'd don't really want to end up losing because the battery goes flat. Having said that, uh, the battery life is substantial and uh, another can message that is sent out from this uh, steering wheel panel is the battery life. So you can set up a warning in the dash to give you weeks of, of advance warning that the battery needs to be replaced. We'll see exactly how that pans out. But the advantage of course is no need for curly cords running between the steering wheel and the vehicle. And yes I know there are other solutions such as the Crontec uh, steering wheel hub which incorporates an Autosport connector. So yes I know, I know there are other solutions but we wanted to trial this and see how it all panned out. The nice feature with this product and essentially most CAM based products is that you're not 
stuck with one brand of manufacturer. So obviously this is an ECU Master steering wheel panel. We run a Motec electronics package for the majority of the car uh, in terms of the ECU, Motec M150 and also the Dash which is a C125. But it's really easy to decode all of the CAN messages from these switches, the, the paddles on the back as well for our gear shift uh, and the rotary knobs. We can decode those inside of the C125, essentially using it a bit like a CAN hub and then we're sending that information back out to the Motec ECU. Uh, so if we just quickly jump across to my laptop screen again, uh, we'll just have, have a quick look at how that's done. So we come up to connections and communications and we do have quite a bit going on in this particular vehicle but uh, essentially what we're interested in here is the ECU Master uh, steering wheel and there are the received channels that we've decoded there. Really pretty easy to do because uh, the all of the information on the CAN message template, how it's sent out, uh, is provided via ECU Master. So in this particular architecture of, of different manufacturers' components, the M150, the ECU itself, can't deal directly with the messages coming from the steering wheel, which is why, as I said, I'm using the C125 as a CAN gateway or CAN hub. Basically, the messages are being, cut, being brought in and decoded, and then I'm sending them back out in a format that the Motec M1 can can understand. So for example, if we come down here, we've got our M1 paddle switch transmit, which does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we're transmitting the, the gear paddle up switch, the gear paddle down switch, as well as a boost limit disable and traction model, mode, model switch, which I'll talk about in a moment. So basically then I can decode those in the M1 and calibrate the switches or knobs as required to do the function. So uh, really quite a neat solution. Not all plain sailing, couple of minor issues and I admit they are minor. Uh, with the the design of this, we go to our overhead again, we do need a standoff in here to basically get this uh, to not foul on the steering wheel. That's going to depend of course on the dish of your steering wheel. What I found is that ergonomically it's a bit of a stretch for my thumbs to get to everything but you know it, it is absolutely manageable. Um, the other thing that we did find as well is that the connector for the paddles here, these I believe are referred to as a ZH connector and in my opinion probably not quite up to uh, motorsport grade, quite fiddly to work with, hard to source, I wasn't super impressed with the retention on them and also again from memory I think they were, come with 26 gauge wire which is really really small. Uh, definitely not a place that I'm trying to save weight with my wiring, I want reliability uh, and I did actually mention that to ECU Master as a small critique uh, and it was taken on board so we'll see if anything gets updated there. Uh, now just in terms of how that all works as well, we I just, I'll just i walk you through a, a few of the, the things that we're doing with this. So we come across to my laptop screen again and uh, just because I want to basically know exactly what's going on with all of the parameters on the dash. So I don't want to have to be looking specifically for a number on a steering wheel rotary knob. I want the dash to be telling me that. So uh, basically this is Display Creator which allows us to do uh, a complete design of our, our dash, how it works in any way that I want. So we'll just come over here. This is what it looks like normally and if you've been following our webinars for a long time, I have gone over this but it's probably fresh to a lot of people. So what we're seeing here on the left hand side of the screen, this is the main dash display. So that's what it's going to look like. And generally how most racing drivers are going to use a dash display is they're not going to look at it at all. In fact, all they're going to do under normal circumstances is take notice of the shift light module that's across the top that's obviously telling you when to change gear. It's only really when something goes wrong that that's going to draw your attention to the dash and then you can kind of figure out what's going on as required. So as part of this, what I wanted to do is make this really simple. So the uh, temperatures, uh, uh, pressure and oil pressure and battery voltage on the left hand side that I've just circled here. What I've done with Display Creator is basically make these so that uh, under normal conditions when everything's in the correct range, uh, these will be just greyed out so there'll be no colour associated with them. Uh, when they are dangerous we will colour code them red. So for example when the engine and oil temperatures are cold they'll actually go blue, when they're in the operating range that I'm happy with they'll go 
transparent, basically just white. And then when they get too hot, they go red. Uh, likewise, our oil pressure, you know, you could probably get the idea. Uh, we've also got uh, tire pressure monitoring here, which does exactly the same thing. Blue when it's cold, uh, grey when it's in the zone, and then orange and red when they start getting a bit hot. So again, from a visual glance, just from a colour coding, we already know without actually looking at the numbers where we're at. Uh, then we've got all of these uh, overlays that pop up here. And uh, basically this allows us, again, just as we adjust one of these knobs to straight away, that'll pop up on the screen and show us what's going on. So uh, we can see as I go through these switch groups here, uh, the different settings. So I've got minimum, maximum. So if someone jumps in the car and maybe gets a little bit confused, they haven't driven it for a while, uh, they can straight away see from the minimum, maximum, what we've actually got going on there. So really, really powerful way of uh, bringing in sort of custom features that maybe wouldn't be accommodated within the normal uh, Motec dash architecture if you like. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.